Okay. It is recording now. Okay. Uh, so welcome everyone. I thought there was going to be so half of the people there are from the team. So uh, thank you for attending. You probably know already how to sell a CPN. And as Carlos said, we are interested in your feedback. So I already prepared a survey, but probably will not be very representative if if only it's filled by half of you. Um, well, we'll see. Let's uh, let's see. Um, I'm going to to share the desktop, um, and I'm going to. So um, in the, in the chat room, there's a link to the survey. Uh, just go there during the talk. Uh, I will give you some some minutes uh, at the end, and and we'll see at least. Uh, who you are? Yeah. Maybe it's it's useless, but probably. Um, so let's uh, let's just start with the presentation. So when I was asked what to talk about this webinar, I thought the CPM thing would be a uh, um, would be ready. Uh, this was two months ago, but uh, we always have the feeling that it's almost ready, but things keeps appearing and. And, and sadly, I cannot say it's ready and it's released. Um, we are almost there, but I think it's it's stable enough to at least describe the installation process and, and also invite you to install it as a beta testers. Um, so in summary, um, as, I said, as I said before, I want to know who, who are you? Um, then I, I talk about the installer. We have prepared an installer for a CPN to make things easier. Um, and I talk about preparing the installation. There are a few, at least a few things that you need to prepare before before using the the installer. Um, and then I, I will try to demo in two cases: one with Ubuntu twenty and and Conda. And the other with CentOS 8 and virtual end. Uh, I will describe what is basically roughly the, the new architecture of a CPN. And I will describe what are the release notes. It's a huge list of functionality. I'll describe the status of, of, the, of the code now. And then we'll see who you are. Um, please. Uh, I will ask Carlos if there is any question because I'm 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 looking at the presentation. Well, maybe you too, but uh, I'm happy if you want to interrupt and ask any questions. But I need some kind of sound from your side. Um, so, uh, who are you? I, as I said, I prepared this. Um, if you can follow the link that is pasted in the chat and and fill those four questions, uh, we'll see. Uh, the results at the end of the presentation and hopefully it's, it's useful it tells us something um so as i said i pre we prepare um an installer uh it's a python package so it should be easy to install uh but obviously there's a requirement you need python 2 or python 3 in your machine and you need pip which is the kind of Python package manager or the one you use to install these kind of standard packages. Um, it's called a CPN installer, and it's actually released in PyPy, which is the official repository for, for hosting Python packages. Um, uh, depending on your machine and, and how your Python is installed, which Python do you have, there are different ways to to run it uh, or to install. So those four ways there are different ways to to install the, the installer. You can write, you can use Python minus m, probably is the, the, most, the safest one, Python minus m pip install. Uh, minus user, if you don't have uh, permissions, then minus user will install that package in your local uh, folder. So you don't need, um, any any root or sysadmin um, permissions. Uh, so those three, it, it runs either in Python 2 or Python 3. 
So it doesn't matter. This is just a small, uh, very light package uh, with one dependency. So it, it will not harm your Python, your system Python uh, at all. And then this will install a Scipion, but it will install in a different environment, not polluting your, your Python or your system Python. Um, briefly, I'm going to talk about some parameters that the installer um, has, and and I remove those that are are more uh, for developers. Um, so you have the path. Obviously, when when you when you run it, you you call it the the way I show you here, like uh, this way, or if it works, sometimes we found it doesn't work, but just Type in, sorry, install the Scipion, should work. Um, and then you need to pass the path. This is the folder where you want the Scipion to be installed. And this is the only mandatory uh, parameter uh, you need to specify. Uh, then optionally, you can force to use conda with minus conda uh, parameter. In that case, the, the installer will try to use conda. Or otherwise, you can force to to use virtual end. These are two different technologies to create the Python virtual environments, and we are compatible with both. And I'll explain what are the difference between uh, the two of them. Um, Sorry, Pablo, I have a question. So, yeah. if you give Conda or virtual environment, what is the environment that it uses, or it doesn't use any of these two tools? Uh, if you don't pass it, yeah. If you, don't, yeah, if you don't pass it, it will try, it will favor Conda because Conda, uh, it's easier to sell. It provides already most of the um, libraries that XMIP or other packages will need. Um, so it's more straightforward installation through Conda. It will try. If Conda is in the path, it will try Conda. If it doesn't find, then it will, it will fall back on VirtualM. So if you don't pass any of them, it will try the best option. Uh, so it will try Conda. If not possible, it will try virtual environment. Okay. Then minus J parameter is the number of uh, CPUs you want to use for XMIC compilation. Uh, because the installer installs CPUs, installs a CPU and also installs XMIP uh, right after. Uh, you can you can pass minus dry parameter and this will just show the command without running anything so you want to understand what is going to do the the installer uh just pass them minus dry and, and you will see what it's going to do um Pablo, okay. there is another question yes so if you install Scipion 3 what will happen with Scipion 2 so uh, can they uh, live together in the same computer one will interfere with the other? Yes. Um, they can leave because the Scipion um, installs in its, in, in its folder. There are some dependencies, but uh, as long as they are in the system uh, uh, or they are found, there's no incompatibility in having both. The only, the only clash probably is with the config that resides in the home. So, you know, Scipion2 had a config file in the home folder per user. And, and that config is used by both of them. And, and you need to make them compatible somehow. Um, there are ways to, to, to fix this, uh, but that would be probably the most uh, common concern because that config will be used by both installations. Another question is uh, whether, uh, what happens with the project? So can you open a Scipion 2 project in Scipion 3 and vice versa or? Yes, we've done an effort and we always try to make it compatible, backwards compatible. Uh, so, so far we are able to open uh, projects from a CPU. So there's no compatibility in the data model, incompatibility in the data model. The projects created by CPU 2 should be able to be open in, in a CPU 3. What could happen is if you, let's say there are new plugins in, in, in the CPU 3. Uh, if you use those plugins in the CPU 3, 
uh, and then you want to open that project in the CPM2, um, the CPM2 is not going to be able to, to load those protocols or those boxes because it's not going to find uh, to find those those protocols. That, that, that will, will happen. Is there any question? No, not anymore. Okay. Okay. Um, so the the other option is minus n, and this is optional as well, and is the name of the virtual environment you want to give to the the virtual environment the CPN is going to create. Uh, by default, this dot CPN three n, and if you want another name, you can pass minus n uh, and a uh, text uh, value. So before before um, getting the um, the installation, you need to prepare a few things. Uh, there are several factors that affect the, the, um, the installation. And probably one of the question is if you are admin of the machine or not. If you don't have admin privileges and your machine lacks of many of the, um, the libraries that we require, then, then probably the best option is to go for Conda installation. Um, also, the number of libraries that you have installed in the system uh, might affect you. Uh, and as I said, uh, if you want to use Conda or Ritualm, those are decisions you need to make. Um, so there are obviously several scenarios. If you don't have privileges, I would recommend to go for a Conda installation. You can install Conda in your machine without being root or admin. It's just downloading a, I usually install mini Conda. Uh, it's just downloading a .sh file and run it. Uh, usually doesn't give any problem. Uh, but there are a few things that you need to have um, and Conda doesn't provide. Uh, this is G++, C++. Those are compilers probably already in the system. Uh, so probably you don't need to install them. And then OpenMPI, it's also needed. And, and this might not be in the system. So this, if you don't have root privileges, then you might have a problem here, or you should ask your um, sysadmin to install or enable OpenMPI in your, for your user or however you use your machine. And CUDA, obviously it's not, it's not mandatory technically, but RelyOn XMIC now has uh, lots of CUDA functionality. And and other other software, motion core, uh, yeah, motion core, uh, GCTF. Uh, so you, you already probably know them. So CUDA is recommended to to be in the system. I, I have another question there. So a single CUDA installation suffices for all the plugins, or you need several? Like a motion core tool requires this CUDA, yeah. then Reliant requires this other CUDA, or how is that handled? It's, I think uh, CUDA 10.1 probably now could be the, the best option to fit uh, all of them. Uh, most of the binaries that we don't have control, which is motion core, um, GCTF, um, they they are they are distributed in a binary version. But but they have version for they have been updated and they have versions for for recent CUDA. So before CUDA 8 was the, the best option for CPM2, but I think now it would be CUDA 10.1. But we need to analyze this more in detail, I think. Yeah. I have uh, a question. Yes. Apart from CUDA. Okay. Uh, when you say uh, you can install with admin privileges using VirtualM, does it mean that without admin privileges, you cannot install with VirtualM? Because I thought it was like Conda, you could have a home, a, a local yeah. uh, installation. I don't know. Well, the, the thing is, apart from, from a Python environment, uh, we need some C++ library or, or binary libraries installed. This is out of Python scope. This is for XMIT. You need FFTW, you need HDFI, you need uh, LIFTIF, you need JPJ, J yeah, JPJ. 
you need different different libraries and this is not provided or shipped with a standard Python environment. Um, so the thing is, Conda is a mix of Python environment management plus uh, binary libraries. So Conda provides many of, of those libraries out of the box. Um, Obviously, you can download the sources and compile all those libraries, but I would say that's a nightmare. And that's uh, that's not a suggestion or an option, I think, here. OK, I see. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, so as I was saying, um, no, if you don't have privileges, I would go for Conda. This is just the, the requirements and probably G++ and C++ is already in your system. Um, and if you have admin privileges, you can also go for Conda. But you have the chance to install VirtualM if you prefer that uh, virtual environment manager. Um, obviously, you need the same dependencies, uh, but you need more dependencies that you usually get using apt-get in case of Ubuntu-based distributions or Yum in case of CentOS or some other um, package manager for your OS. So I'm going to jump right in into the two demos. So as I said uh, before, I was going to demo the installation of uh, Ubuntu 20, uh, so a Scipion in Ubuntu 20 with Conda. And I prepare a virtual machine that is basically the one you download from the, the Ubuntu website for Ubuntu 20. Um, not the server configuration, but the basic not It doesn't have LibreOffice or all the software games. It's a plain desktop installation or distribution. And I already installed CUDA. So, and Conda, so I'm not going to show those steps. It's already installed there. So let me jump into this machine that is already launched. Um, so I have here the machine. Uh, I have Conda. Uh, can, you, can you see this? Should I have, uh, I have this split window, but it might not be enough. Um, do you prefer it like a single machine, single? Well, just let me know if if you don't read the properly this. Um, so here on the left, I have a, a documentation we are preparing. It's not released yet, um, but uh, it will describe um, what what I've been talking about. It will talk about Conda, CUDA, which is already installed. Uh, and then it has a few recipes for what I believe is the most common um, distributions we have. So I asked them a while ago, what is the OS that our users were using? And I got kind of 50% Ubuntu, 50% uh, CentOS. So the recipes are for those two distributions, but obviously, um, you could install this in another distribution, but uh, I don't know the comments exactly if they share the same package manager or the names of the library, sometimes they change. So you need to find out what is the, um, or probably we, if we extend this list, uh, what is the actual name of the library in, in your distribution. Um, so I'm going to um, copy this, um, as I said, these are the basic dependencies. I already have Conda, but um, I need the GCC 8 and G++ 8 and OpenMPI. And just make sure I have make. Uh, you might have it already, but I discovered I didn't. And for this, I need to be sudo. So I'm just copying and pasting this command. Um, Now we should be installing it. So during this, uh, um, during this time, you can go to the survey and fill it um, um, while I'm talking and waiting for this to finish. 
So this is normal OS stuff, just installing libraries. Um, it's taking a while. Is there any question while we wait? Maybe you can explain a bit what is Conda and Virtual Env. So Conda, you explained a bit more. So it is a yeah, uh, yeah. Please. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not actually an expert, but um, so what the way I see it is there are different packages, and actually now everything in the CPM3 is a package that can be installed with a single command with pip pip install and then the package, you can install that code in your machine. The problem is where that package end up. If it if you, you install things on your system Python, you can corrupt. And this is a matter of, of the version dependencies because you might have different um, packages or different versions and incompatibilities between them. And then you, you can screw your your Python uh, your system Python if you install things in that um, in that say Python that is meant to work for your operating system. Uh, so because we don't want to do that, we have gone for a virtual environment approach. That means that we are going to start a fresh new environment. It's like a black box or a, maybe more a sandbox. Uh, where everything we do is within those boundaries of this box. Therefore, we cannot break anything outside the box. Uh, all we can do is break our own Python, but there is no way we can break your system Python. And for this, there are two technologies, which one is uh, Conda and the other is VirtualM. VirtualM is a more a lightweight uh, virtual environment manager. Uh, it basically copies your Python uh, structure and libraries and, and ma makes another folder with with those with those uh, libraries and, and uh, quite often they are not copies; they are just links. But uh, it's enough to preserve the system Python or to isolate your Python from others uh, from the system Python. Uh, but it doesn't give you any other uh, functionality or code apart from Python stuff. And Conda is is all this I talk about virtual name, but also it gives you uh, lots of uh, software that is is uh, based on not Python but uh, libraries uh, in compiles binaries. Um, this is how I see it. Obviously, I am not an expert in Conda, so I might be missing some stuff. But the big difference between both of them is that Conda is providing you more things, not only Python. So um, I finished the installation. Uh, here, I recommend Conda Activate, but I, I already have Conda Activated because I have this base environment. This is coming from my Conda installation. So this line is just to export. Um, this might change in the future. We are, we are working with XMIP uh, guys to, to make this smoother, but so far we have detected that we need to do this to, to Specify XMIP to use G plus plus version eight um, when when it's going to compile its CUDA code. So this is a way to do it. Um, and then we are going to export also where do we have our CUDA because XMIP needs to find uh, where CUDA is. Uh, this is a way to do it. So if now that I have updated the path variable, if I do NBCC, uh, so I I think this is the um, I could check the version uh, minus minus maybe. 
So as you see, it's finding this, which is NVIDIA compiler for CUDA stuff. Um, so this should be okay now to, to trigger the installation. So next step is going to, actually here is when it comes to the actual installation of a Scipion, apart from the preparation of it. So the first thing would be to uh, install the installer, right? This is a lightweight, um, a lightweight uh, Python package um, that is going to install this virtual M dependency in case you want to go for the virtual M approach and, and a few things more. This has finished the installation of the installer. And now, um, it's time to do the CPN installation, which is the last line. So this line is using the, the CPN installer, uh, the path, obviously I need to adapt it to, um, I need to pass the path where I want the Scipion to be installer. Uh, so I want this under Scipion3 folder in my home. Uh, and then minus J is how many processors I want to use for compilation. Um, so uh, now because we are not, really, we haven't released yet the code, we have this warning so you will find this warning you that this is still an unstable version if you want to continue, okay? Um, I just enter yes. And now uh, I haven't I haven't said conda. I haven't passed conda in the common. Uh, where is it? Uh, uh, it's hidden. Yeah, sorry, I just, uh, no. Uh, so I haven't passed conda, but it has detected conda in the path. So it's going for a conda installation. Um, so I press yes to confirm the, the installation of the environment. And now it's installing or preparing the, the environment. And what it will do is it will prepare the environment. It will install the CPM core packages and then it will start the installation of the XMIC plugin. And the XMIC plugin will trigger the installation of XMIP. So uh, it, it will take some time. So I'm going back to the um, presentation. And I'm probably going forward. If, if there's any question, I'm happy to, to answer. Uh, there has been an, an important question. Why do people want to install Scipion 3? What are the advantages and differences with respect to Scipion 2? Yes. Uh, I have a long list of things here in the slide, so I can I can jump right in to the list. Um, yeah, why not? <laughs> so um, we have collected all the things that we, we've done in the last year since we released a second two. And, and there, are, there are like four slides for it. Uh, they're grouped by, by, by different softwares affected. So first if is about the Scipion. So Scipion, this is a huge work done in, in migrating Scipion to Python 3. This actually is something from a user point of view that you might not be interested in. You actually don't care. But, but we have to do it because the support for Python 2 was actually has ended. So we, we have to update uh, to Python 3. And we also did a huge uh, change inside, um, inside the whole Scipion architecture. Um, so one of the consequences of it is that Everything is updatable. So for Scipion 2, you could you could update the plugins. Um, so we could have fixed uh, any plugin, any error in the plugin, or a new version of, of uh, let's say, Reliant. Well, Reliant is, is tricky. 
but but uh, many other software has released uh, different versions and we have released a version of the plugin that it's compatible with that new version of the of the code um, but we couldn't update the cpion itself the cpion was static um, so now everything is updatable even the cpion core so the way I see it is, this is probably the last time you're going to install a CPN. This You will install a CPN and next, then next time you probably will just update the CPN and update the CPN with the code we released. At least this is our hope. Um, so you don't need to go through this process uh, every year or or depending how often we, we released code. Um, and the plugins obviously remains as they were. They are updatable through the plugin manager or through the command line. Um, and then we have added a few functionalities. We have added workflow templates. Um, this is trying to cover requests from, from users that they want to use a specific feature of XMIP, for example. Sorry, I'm not in presentation mode. Um, they want to use a specific version of XMIP, and, and it was hard to install everything and even to run it. You need to be familiar with the whole uh, Cipion environment, and, and it could be overwhelming, all the options that the Cipion offers. Um, so we decided workflow templates that I can, I can maybe show you. This is my machine. I haven't prepared this, so excuse me if something breaks here. So, as I was saying, the the CPU template, the workflow templates are small workflows that every plugin plugin can can ship together with the plugin. And the CPM will be able to find it and offer it to the user. So you want a small workflow to run DevRes or, or local Deblar uh, thing. So uh, XMIP uh, developers could design that workflow and expose that work workflow to you. So you will find it here under workflow templates. And you will, for example, this are two workflows provided by different plugins. Um, and then when you click in one of them, then you are asked for the parameters this workflow template has decided you, uh, CPU needs to ask for. You fill these values, and then a new project is created. Let's see if this works. I might be missing something. Um, but then it creates a, a project. There's so many errors there. I have I have missing some some plugins here. Sorry, but nevertheless, it's trying to do stuff. Um, I should show the the project window now. So. This is what that template has done. It has created this, uh, in this case, these six boxes with those imports, CTF, the picking, because I don't have all the plugins here installed. Uh, it looks like a mess, but I don't have the, the motion core plugin installed. But I hope you, you get an idea of what I'm explaining or trying to explain. So this would be for the, for the templates. Um, there are several GUI improvements. So we have added, uh, we have improved the wizards usability. Um, we have other search boxes, for example. Uh, these are minor stuff, but, but we, we got uh, um, feedback and, and it's this kind of, this kind of, um, Things that with a little effort, I think you get uh, some some nice experience. So probably this box you are not familiar with. This can fit in case you have uh, many 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 projects. You can filter 
the list of, uh, of projects. Uh, and then some of the wizards have been have been improved, and also some search here. Left. I think this this also uh, now you have more columns, so you can you can filter by you can you can search by any of this uh, content. Uh, not only the name of the protocol, but also the, the description of the protocol. In case the name doesn't have the keyword you, you want, it will find using all these keywords. Uh, we have fixed uh, several, many bugs, I think I will say. Um, and then another thing is the, the config. So we, we usually find users confusing with the config. And, and actually, it's a bit confusing. There are two configs, one for a CPM, the other in the home. And if you combine this with a machine, with different users accessing the same machine, then this, this confusion can go on and on because the combination of CPM configs are, are it's not uh, like, each of the users have has its own config in the home. So we have revisited this. Um, and now the configs are optional. So you, a Scipion can run without any configuration. It has default values. But uh, it doesn't mean you cannot have the configurations. You actually, in some cases, you need to have them. So you need to run the config step. and. And, and then you need to set up your configuration. This is important when you have a cluster and you need to set up your host file or you need to customize uh, where is your MPI or your CUDA lib or your binary you want to use for motion core or other plugin. You, you're going to need this, uh, these config files. Um, and also restart a continue workflow has been improved. Uh, we introduce this in in a Scipion when you when you click this in when you, when you have a workflow. Um, my machine is a bit um, slow with all these things. Um, nah, it was open. So you could you could right click here and you can restart the workflow or continue the workflow, right? So that means that from this box and uh, all the boxes that are hanging from this one will be either will continue if we are talking about the streaming protocols or they will restart all of them. So that has some bugs in the CPM2. Uh, we have improved the behavior of this um, Functionality in a CPM three, open three projects, great. Um, yeah, and as I said, uh, we migrated it to Python three, that which doesn't bring you any functionality. The other is probably the the new architecture. Um, I think it isolates um, it isolates better the the components of a CPM, and uh, and it simplifies the installation which I think is a consequence of, of this. Uh, for the plugins, uh, uh, Grigory, which is already uh, attending, and, and Jose Miguel, they've been working hard uh, on integrating Reliant 3.1 methods. Um, uh, Grigory has done also uh, a great work updating Iman. Uh, he has created other plugins as well. Prayer Dragon, which is not in the list, I think. Yeah, I think it's, it's down there. Yeah, it's down there. Cryo Dragon and Side Splitter. Uh, binaries for CUDA 10.1 has been are available for GCTF and geo Um There's a specific facilities plugin to deal with facility stuff. So all the monitors and, and, and the summary monitor uh, has been been moved to a new plugin. And also the option to export the data to Grafana, which is a, 
let's say a website you can run locally that is able to plot any kind of data and, and, and customize your, your data and make your own plots. So it will give more flexibility. Um, Sphere also plugin uh, has been updated with new releases of Criolo. And then tomography. Tomo tomography is a huge, um, is a huge um, uh, functionality we are working in. Uh, there are lots of things coming with tomography. This uh, Cipionium Tomo, which is the core uh, plugin for tomography, it provides the, the imports, the basic imports uh, protocols. Uh, and then you have a plugin for some of the common tomography software that at least we have started to, to integrate. Uh, there's, IMOD, there's an IMOD plugin with all those uh, uh, methods uh, in the first uh, steps of the workflow for cross-correlating till series, uh, fiducial till series alignment, till series normalization, tomogram reconstructions, uh, a huge list. Um, Nova CTF is also, this was a plugin for Nova CTF. Uh, we are extending the Reliant plugin to deal with uh, 3D CTF, as it's describing in the wiki, and to do classification and refine and a tomogram. No, I don't think it's a tomogram reconstruction. It's a subtomogram average, I think. Um, uh, also, we have added tom uh, Iman protocols to the plugin. Uh, so many of the of the Iman functionality for tomography is already there. Uh, we have added also a uh, code from Jose Jesus Fernandez, which is a uh, uh, tomo de noise analysis. There are lots of, I think there's a huge list, I'm going to go quick. Uh, but tomography is a huge uh, catalog of, of uh, plugins. Definder, this is a nice work done by, by an external developer in France. He integrated the whole uh, workflow of this finder in Ethereum. Uh, CTF estimation using GCTF and system is already for, for tomography. Dynamo, some of the methods in, in Dynamo are there. Uh, XMIP has already some, some um, methods for 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 tomography uh, is as i said it's a huge list I, I cannot describe all of them so probably we should have a webinar for tomography at some point because i cannot even explain all of them and then also xmeet comes with uh, huge huge changes uh there's been in the last year a huge improvement in the gpu um code so there's a uh, a new flex align method to do movie alignment that runs on gpu but uh, many of the methods carlos oscar might uh, correct me but uh, many of the methods that are used in many of the xmit methods uh, like the align significant has been accelerated uh, and this will accelerate other like high res or other methods so uh I expect uh, faster computation or, or, or less times in computing results in XMIP. Uh, apart from other functionality, micrograph inner deep consensus, um, uh, deep res, FSCQ map analysis. Uh, the installation has been has been improved a lot as well. So XMIP comes with a lot of uh, functionality that I hope you find it very useful. Um, so this is a huge list of, of changes. Let's go back to, to the installation. Where is it? So it takes a while because XMIP is there and, and XMIP is going to take, <laughs> to take uh, time to compile. Uh, I'm going to go. I'm going up in the in the output list to show you. Uh, if you if we reach this point, I think everything 
uh, went well. Uh, but I'm going to show you this. When you start seeing these colors, it where where XMAP installation uh, was kick off, and here I think if if it doesn't work, you will it will stop. Yeah, but if it works, is as you as you can see. Here is trying to detect stuff like oh, I'm not finding HDF5, but I know I'm using Conda, so I'm going to use Conda to install HDF5. So it's actually using Conda to install the, the libraries that XMIP needs. And it's the same for all these dependencies you can see in red. Because I didn't have it, I have a plain Ubuntu installation without any of these libraries. So XMIP is clever enough to detect that this running under a Conda environment and is requesting the installation of those libraries. The same as Java. Java I didn't have Java installed, but it requests Conda to install Java. Um, and then for CUDA, this is because I previously prepared the environment. Uh, it has detected CUDA 10.1. So, so are, yeah, I have a question in there. So Java is one of the uh, of the packages that changes a lot the name between different di Linux distributions. So does yeah. it detect somehow that it is uh, under CentOS or Ubuntu and then asks for the right name? No. Well, I think uh, the good thing about Conda is that the name is normalized among distributions. I would say among even probably operating systems. So when you want, when you ask Conda to install um, Java, I think the name will be the same regardless, um, regardless the, the the operating system, if it's CentOS or, or Ubuntu. But this is because we're using Conda. Otherwise we need to find the name uh, that the system wants. Yeah. Okay. So here it tries MPI. Um, so it tries also CUDA. It does a small CUDA compilation. Everything is fine, and then the compilation starts. So and it still is going on. Um, So hopefully, I I was optimistic preparing two demos. Uh, I think I'm not going to demo the CentOS one. Um, but it's describing the documentation as well. Um, so I'm going back to the presentation. Um, so I'm going to jump back to this slide, which is uh, the, the architecture to give you an idea what, at least roughly what is yeah, so it was my echo, I think. Um, sorry, this had an animation. Um, so let's say this is your machine in gray, this this gray box, and and your box has probably has already a Python. Um, with this Python, maybe it's your system Python, or it could be your con installation. It doesn't matter. But you have a Python. You need to have Python there already. And then in this yellow box, you have um, your system libraries. And with this, I'm talking about um, whatever code, OpenMPI, C++, uh, all the X11 libraries, anything that is not Python. Yeah. So. One of the first thing we need to do is to install these three elements, uh, G++, C++, and OpenMPI. This is part of the preparation. And this goes into the system libraries. So there's no way to avoid this. And, and uh, as far as I know, to ask Conda for, for getting this stuff. Uh, so for this, you need, um, obviously, because you are touching your system, you need pseudo privileges for these three elements. Um, and then the next step will be to install the, the Scipion installer. And this goes into your existing Python, either your Conda-based environment or your system Python. 
this is not the CPN itself. It's just a installer, which is a lightweight package, and it will not harm your system. And then when you run the installer, the installer is actually creating this new green box, which is a virtual environment where we install all our stuff. So we, we install our CPM core libraries or, or packages, but also all the plugins goes inside this virtual environment. Yeah. And then when you install a plugin, these plugins uh, may or may not install the corresponding library or, or binary, sorry. So uh, Reliant plugin will install Reliant 3.1 and 3.0. Uh, XMIP plugin will install XMIP. Uh, uh, CrashSpark is not installed, we are not allowed. Um, but it has to be there somewhere. You need to install CrashSpark so the CrashSpark plugin can talk to CrashSpark uh, somewhere. Going ahead, and I'm almost finishing about the status. I would say CPM3, the core, what is the, the, the basic, uh, the migration to Python 3, all the functionality, we have we have frozen the code already. Uh, only we detect some, some bug, we will fix it. But I would say CPM3 core is stable. Uh, most of the plugins are ready. And probably uh, Reliant one and XMIP one are the ones that are, uh, they need uh, some additional testing. So Reliant is almost in beta and XMIP is in beta. Uh, this means that, uh, um, well, it's stable, the course is stable. The, those plugins are, are quite important. Uh, but if your work is not critical, um, you are very welcome to test it and, and beta test and give us feedback about errors, about whatever you are finding. Um, um, I think where we have users in doing doing it, stuff in the CPM3, and we have recently published a paper, and and most of the work was done in the CPM3. Obviously, with the developer support, fixing the stuff, but but all the, those things have been fixed already. Uh, uh, in terms of tomography, tomography is more unstable. We think it's in alpha status. Things are getting into shape, um, but that's not a workable version. Yeah, so that, that would be more painful if you want to start using tomography in a CPM. Um, and documentation needs work as well. We need to work on the documentation and improve it for CPM3. So last, uh, almost last page. I want to know, uh, only, only eight. Uh, let's see, facility manager. Um, anything, it's a structural biologist. Uh, okay, two non, the CPU users. I thought we were going to be more. So thank you anyway for, for entering your 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 option here. Um, I can see workstation cluster. Uh, okay, no tomography yet. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you anyway for your answers. And yeah, this, this as, uh, as I always say, this is not the work of, of not even Madrid uh, work. This is uh, this is a huge team in Madrid, which mostly is on the left uh, side. But but Jose Miguel also is working from Stockholm and the Crayon facility there. And guys there are working uh, and, and improving the CPM. Um, Grigory Sharov, it's, uh, it's incredible how he works and uh, how productive he is creating plugins uh, uh, and improving the CPM. And there are lots of uh, developers, uh, you have, Helsinki, Bahida, this Emmanuel from France. Uh, I've, I know I, I forgot many, so now it comes to Slavica Kajonik and they, they develop a continuous flex plugin. I'm probably missing many people. Uh, 
probably it's hard to list everyone now. Um, also, I want to mention the the facilities as the CMB. So Roberto, Ana, and Javi, they are not developers, but they are helping, they are suffering a lot the instability of the tomography, for example, that it breaks or not, or, or it broke continuously in the past. Now it's more stable, but not ready. And and they are trying to use it and, and hit it on a wall for for a long time. Um, but this is necessary to 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 release a, a product that we believe has to be stable and, and and with less errors or with high quality. Um, but thank you. This is the last slide. Thank you for your attention, and I'm open to any questions if there is any. Um, Sara, if you post it before, sorry, I, I missed all the questions, so it's it's okay. You post it again. Uh, I'm just reading Sara. Uh, how about Crash Park? In CPM, it's not something obvious to install as a plugin. Actually, I know. <laughs> okay. Um, well, Crash Park, uh, it can be installed as a plugin, as, as the other plugin, you can install it. But because we cannot have, we cannot install uh, CryoSpark due to its licensing, then you need to set up, uh, you need to go to the config file and set up the, um, the config file accordingly to find CryoSpark. Um, we believe we have a documentation for it. Uh, let me try to show you how to find that. So if, if I'm in a sequence three, if you go to the to the plugin manager, this this will work for CPN two as well. It takes a while to load the, the plugins. Um, this is my local installation, not the one in the virtual machine. Um, so if you go to the to each of the plugin, you will see here a description of the plugin, and you will see here a link. Uh, usually, the documentation for setting up that plugin is in, in this uh, link. So uh, here you can find uh, a description of the plugin, and you can find the steps. So you start the plugin. This is through the command line. Um, and then you need to add this to your to the your config file. Otherwise, the sequence will not be able to interact with 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 CryoSpark. Obviously, Sada, you can you can email Junior. He will help uh, for sure. Uh, We are already uh, replying. Uh, what technical change we have moved? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Grigor is right. We have. If you want to, if you want to report an issue, maybe you've done it before. We have moved to this organization. So this is uh, not any longer. Before it was CPNI two PC. Yeah, this is uh, our. Previous uh, and this is still the the home for for XMIP uh, stuff, but but the Scipion has moved to this URL. Um, before you can probably report any of this, uh, let's say a Scipion app. It could be it could belong to some other place, but let's let's go for this a Scipion app, and you can report issues here. And create your issue in case you find any problem or you want to report a bug or even request new functionality. We're still compiling. Uh, let's see. <laughs> anyway, I, I think that another way to communicate to the Scipion team is just write to Scipion at uh, cmb.sasic.es. Is it yes. Yeah. Uh, 
Yes, we have a, if you go to the website, I think it's, if you go to CPN side, still those channels are CPN, TPC, FS. Um, if you go to the contact us, which is here below, these are the, the normal channels you can, you can contact us. Yeah. And, and if you want to contact the plugin developers, you have a list here with the URLs for, for each of the plugins. So you know you, you, your request is specific for a plugin, then you, you can go to any of these links and report an issue there. Yeah, so installation has already finished. I added um, uh, only four CPUs. Uh, this is a virtual machine. Probably it's not, it is not the fastest compilation, but XMIP takes a while to compile. Um, but you have a workstation with the specifications of a normal uh, workstation to do image processing. You can specify there 20 CPUs or, or maybe more, and it will be faster. Yeah. I have a question. So the default installation by Cypion of XMIP, does it include the deep learning stuff? Or you have mm, to No, I don't think so. I don't think it includes the deep, the, the XMIP deep learning stuff. Okay. Yeah. And that, 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 there was another question about helical uh, particles inside Cypion. So yeah. we would love to address those, but uh, at the moment we we don't have enough uh, manpower to to address everything and to address all possible uh, kinds of of processing. There are some some protocols that can deal a bit with uh, helical particles, but it is not a, a dedicated uh, plugin. Hmm. Thank you, Grigory, for reminding the, <laughs> the survey. Uh, sadly, there wasn't enough uh, people for, for extracting conclusions, I guess. Um, well, uh, if they, I don't see any more questions. Sarah, thank you. <laughs> if you have any question, you need any help, you want to, uh, to test or to try new functionality, um, if you are one of those guys that uh, they like beta testing or, or like to have the newest thing, even if they the, the new version is unstable, uh, then you are more than welcome to to install it. And I think it's the right time to do it. Uh, maybe not for tomography. Yeah, Alex, there is a plugin for Criolo and one for Topaz. I think the Criolo one is more more rounded, I guess. Topaz, we did it. Uh, we don't feel probably that we did a good job with Topaz because we didn't know enough. But there are plugins for both. Yeah. Uh, deep Reds depend on deep learning. Uh, yeah, I think um, uh, there's some... Um, there's a separate installation for that comes with XMIP to install. Um, probably there's a, a better question for, for XMIP. I don't think David is there. It is dealing with. Um, sorry. Um, I think uh, deep learning stuff comes as a separate binary. If I do CPN, let's see what it comes. CPN three install B. This is another way to 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 list the the binaries that are defined by the plugins. Um, and I still don't know. So these are deep learning toolkit is here, and you need to do a separate installation. 
I believe this is tricky, and I don't know the status of this. So maybe something to ask to to the XMIT, XMIT guys. Um, I think that the XMIT, these these sources, which is the one I installed, it's it's already working fine. But I would say this might be still not mature enough. Yeah, the, he, the expert is David Manuela. I think he's not connected. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I cannot say. Yeah. yeah, and even I don't know why it is not uh, installed by default because uh, now many uh, tools depend on deep learning. Yeah. Uh, I know it is difficult, so probably that is the reason why. Well, um, this is a decision of the plugin. Um, the plugin can decide to install that by default, but I think it has to be stable. If it's going to fail half of the times, I don't know. I, I don't know the actual status, but yeah, this has to to work. I believe that we did not include the deep learning because uh, uh, because of complicated dependencies. Uh, on uh, on CUDA and uh, then resulting conflicts with with other packages, so yeah. we decided to have it separately just in case you actually want it. Yeah, that that, that makes sense. Otherwise, probably it will break the whole installation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, any other question? Let's see. Yeah. Well, in that case, I would like to thank uh, everyone for your attention um, and hope uh, you start the CPM3 soon and, and enjoy it. Yeah. So to, to run deep res inside CPM3, uh, you have to install the deep learning toolkit. So you have to install CPM3 with XMIP3. And, and then the deep learning to get. Yeah. And yeah, otherwise, uh, thank you all for attending. And next, in, in two weeks, we will have uh, David Malwenda uh, explaining about uh, running protocols in streaming and, and some more facility related stuff. But it is not only uh, useful for facilities, any user can, can benefit from the streaming processing. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Carlos. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Bye. Bye.